opportunity, then you're not going to get generally keep pace with the stock market. In order to keep pace with the stock market, you have to invest in all stocks. But in order to have low risk in return for little growth opportunity, we're not going to invest it in all stocks. So Mrs. Klein, I need you to understand the questions and I'm, I'll explain them to you as much as I can over and over again. I want you to grasp it. So if you're now the latest, well, you know what? Maybe let's scratch number two and let's move to number three here. I want to take moderate risk. That's the education factor. Okay? So you scratch it out and go to three. And then here, the lady gives you to trail the stock market but make a moderate profit. Okay, well that answer goes in line with the previous answer. See, these have to job. You're not able to answer, I want no risk and then I want the stock market returns. This has to be done properly. Now you may be thinking, man, this is a lot of training for my people. Look, it ain't that hard. It's common sense. Isn't that common sense? Yeah. Right? It's not like, oh my God, oh, it's genius. No, it's just common sense. So number, f number five. Now, here's what it says. Suppose the stock market performs unusually poorly over the next decade. What would you expect out of this investment? So if the lady says to also perform poorly, that would jive with her, I'll take a moderate risk. All right, so what if the lady says to make a little gain? Okay, so that's score three. And then the next question is, what of which of these statements would best describe your attitude about the next three years? Now the lady has eight years, you know, to go. So when you don't have a lot of years, eight years is really not a lot of years. The next three years are pretty important. Because if you have a, a horrible one year after you ruin your whole game plan, you're in the red zone of retirement when you're within 10 years. So here, let's make believe the woman writes, I can tolerate a small loss. So that's three. And then last, which of these statements would best describe your attitude over the next 90 days? Now, Mr. 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 we went over over the next 90 days is not important. Eight years is what's important, right? So which of these would reflect? Her answer might be, um, um, I'd be concerned if they decline more than 10%. Or let's scratch that. Let's say I can only tolerate small fluctuations. This is perfect, right? So that's a two. So let's add it all up. Three plus three is six. Plus three is nine. Plus three is 12. Plus three, 15, 18. 1920. She scores a 20. You just add a 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, 20. You flip it over. 18 to 24 is moderate growth. That's the education. I just got her out of a 0 0.01, never grow any money to at least moderate. And she's right in the middle of the score of a moderate growth. So now all you got to do is go to the, now look, if you don't want to use Invesco, create your own, with whoever you want to use. When you use American funds, when you use late nation, but I'm pretty smart. And I worked for weeks on the research, and I got the product specialist of Invesco to fly down for two whole days where all we did was work together to create these. So if you think you're smarter than that, God bless you, go do that. Well, why would you do that? This is a duplication business, right? right? But there will be a person in this room that will do that. <laughs> and then their recruiting will stop. And they'll go, see, I knew it! You know, because you went to the extreme. <laughs> so anyway, we would go here, and we would go to the moderate growth portfolio. And that would be equity and income. So you have a choice. If you notice, I have what? Silver, gold portfolio, and the platinum portfolio. Why did I do that? Because everybody likes recognition. Like, I went out one night with Keith Otto and Jimmy Meyer, and we went out and we had a blast, and 
spent all kinds of money. And then the waitress came at the end with the bill. And Jimmy Meyer takes out his Amex black card. And Keith Nogging takes out his Amex black card. And I take out my platinum card. <laughs> and then they laughed at me. I said, put that shit away. We got it. <laughs>
you never heard that before. You probably heard when stocks go down, bonds go up, but nobody explained it to you. Just some little extra training goes a long damn way. Okay? Yeah. So, anyways, let's go back to the good times, right? Let the good times roll. So, write down the interest rate, not interest rate, the rate of return, high growth. What did it get? 16.17%. Then, the next one is less stock, so it ought to have done a lower rate of return, right? Because there's more bonds, it's not in the stock market 100%. So the next one is 85 stocks, 15 bonds, the exact time period. And that one did a rate of 11.82%, and it grew to almost 180 rate. Okay? Then the next one is conservative bonds. I mean, moderate growth, and that split was what, 65, 35. 100 grand went in, and the return was at its 10.5%. Now, understand, you're giving 10.5%, but if you have a lot of money in bonds, so your risk is a lot less. If the stock market went down and all your money is not in stock, if a portion of it's in bonds and the stock market went down, the portion you have in bonds goes up to help you. You understand that's what it's there for. Then we go to um, uh, conservative growth, half and half, right? Half stocks, half bonds. Now understand this. If half of the money's in stocks, whatever the rate of return that you got in the high growth that was 100% in stocks, what was that number? 16.17%. If this is half in stocks, well, look what you got. 8.167%. See, these are portfolios that are engineered to do what they ought to do with the right allocation. If you imagine with the right clients, you can't harm them. It's when you don't know what you're doing and you're not competent and the regional vice presidents aren't running training in it. It's amazing. I have a guy in the business. He's not in this room, but he's my good friend. He goes, you know, I just, I don't run training on investments because I don't have enough licensed guys. I go, let me ask a question. Do you run training on life insurance with guys that aren't licensed? Well, yeah. Well, why do you do that? I want them to get licensed. <laughs> amazing. So you don't think you ran training on investments? That your guys who want to get an investment license? It's like, I want to Bruce Lee kick him in the head. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Raise your hand, honestly. If you had 10 of your life licensed people in this room today, if you think after this training they would want to get an investment license, raise your hand. Look around the room. I'm telling you, I run investment training like I run training on life insurance, like I run training on recruiting, like I run training on everything. It's just in the mix. It's not all I do, but it's a part of what I do. So anyways, 8.67%. Now we go to the income portfolio. Income portfolio, remember, how much is in stocks? 30%. 30%. So you should not get what you would have got in the high growth when all the money was in. But look what you got. 6.91%. With, with how much risk? 30% of the risk. Because rather than 100% in stocks, how much is in stocks? 30%. No. Now, that's a good time. Let the good times roll, right? Now let's look at the bad times. Because I want you to know and understand, I want to keep these in order, kind of, sort of. Let the bad times roll. So we go here. Bad time. Let's say 8 of 2007 until 8 of 2012. I wanted to do like the exact number of years, and I didn't want to include this year because this year's rocking. So let's look. And if you invest here in 2007, that was right. That's like if you were that guy in Charlie Brown that wherever he walks around, he has a rain cloud over him or a dust is over him. Pig pet. That's a good If you invest all your money there, that is like you have the worst luck in the world because the next year, the market crashed, the world was ending, you lost all your money. Oh my God, how could you invest? So I want to use the worst period. I was able to 
do? Now watch. So if it's all stocks, all stocks, what did you get? 0.82. Now watch this. Go. <laughs> yes, Rush, raise your hand if you have a bank account at Ally Bank. Ally. A L L Y. Nope. One hand went up the room. Okay? Now raise your hand if you have an account at Chase, Bank of America, Wells Fargo. Look, no, almost every hand went up. I looked up the interest rate that they're getting at those places. Brush them off. Oh, he had the money. I'm not even going to bring it up. They, they, 
then you know that half a million is going to the bank in a money market at 0.01%. That's why you have to get your license. You ain't going to help anybody unless you get a license. It's human nature. Human freaking nature. So then you go to, now the next one is less stocks, more bonds, right? Not a lot of bonds, right? Was, right? 50%. But you ought to have got less than, right? Less rate of return. I will when I do municipal. This one grew to 198 grand rate of return, 7.11 percent. A lot of us that own Citigroup stock, <clears throat> wish we own this, <laughs> right? Right. But we drank the damn Kool-Aid. <laughs> Owning Citigroup is like a mutual fund; it's so diversified. This is diversified. Next one, more bonds, less stock, 10-year market, what's the rate of return? 7%. 7 percent. Look, this isn't a bad 10 years, really. Half stocks, half bonds, 100 grand, grows to 186, rate of return, 6.4%. Versus 0 0.01, if you're lucky, Half of a percent. I get in my bank account, I get one and a half percent. But I got over 400 grand. That's the only reason now you go, why you got 400 grand? Because I had to rebuild the house and I had to do some stuff. So I'm waiting to invest it now. But at 4,000, I only get one and a half percent on that. But I got another. Don't worry. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and the last one, stocks and bonds, less risk than the market, look at the rate of return, look at what the money grew to. All that is, is doing a risk profile questionnaire and using the silver portfolios. You don't have to get too complex. You don't have to get it off. Those are good portfolios. Now, Watch this. I ran the income portfolio. This is crazy. I ran the income portfolio. I ran it from 1997 for the last 16 years. Why did I do that? Well, if you look here, in 1999 we had technology bubble burst. Y'all remember that? Mm -hmm. Then we had 9-11, y'all remember 9-11, right? Then we had next year the Enron and, and, and uh, WorldCom, where all the Wall Street companies got caught doing fraud. We went into you know, a war, that war that was only lasted 90 days and we're in it still. Yeah. <laughs> that war. Then we had the mortgage, the real estate, the economy, the credit crunch, the liquidity crunch, and an incompetent president, all wrapped up in one. <laughs> and the 100 grand grew to $241,000, average rate of return of almost 6% in the income portfolio. Listen, folks. You don't get this. Look, and if you have all this knowledge and you are recruiting, because what annoys me more than I went on the investment trips, right? And like about two years ago, they let me speak. And I guess they won't let me anymore. Because <laughs> I basically went on stage and I said, look at the audience. You're all gray hair. <laughs> Honestly. And you're great at investments. But you won't recruit anymore. And you're going to eventually not be able to work. So why don't you go recruit eight, nine, ten people and just train them to do what you know how to do? They're smart. They'll probably learn to recruit and do life in your But go recruit somebody and replace your income so when you don't want to work anymore, you don't have to work anymore. I got out of the field in 2007. That's 2007, 2008, 2009, 10, 11, 12, 13, my seventh year. 
when I got out of the field, I had $2 million saved. I had 800 license code numbers, and I was earning 800 grand a year. And now I'm in the field again. Why? Because I'm tired of getting introduced as the next million dollar earner. <laughs> <laughs> I'm tired of that crap. So here's what I learned. Here's what I learned. Nobody gets as jacked up about life insurance as they do investments. Okay? Now you may not even hear that, but it's the truth. Now, we don't write an investment if there's no life out with it. Nobody walks in our office with an IRA for $100 a month and they're going to like that with it. It's rejected. It's declined. Because we do what's right. And in order to get an investment license, they have to get their life license first. And if they get properly trained, they're going to understand the relevance of getting life insurance first and then the mutual fund. Okay? But this is what they get jacked about more than anything. It just, I mean, they would not have recruited me if they didn't train me and educate me or explain to me investments and mutual funds. That's what got me. I was in college. I was working, I was ready for Arthur Anderson. Okay, and when I heard this, I heard life insurance will throw up. Yeah. <laughs> Recruiting will throw up, but investments I won't do. And then I'm smart. I got in the business and I learned you gotta recruit. You gotta recruit big numbers, you gotta license people, train people, develop them. And then, oh, you gotta do life insurance because what if you wrote and I wrote each and the husband die a year later? What are you bringing them? A grand in their IRA? What is that gonna do for them? No. And so you recruit the masses and the smart people get it, and the knuckleheads don't. And if you're one of the knuckleheads, I'm sorry. <laughs> but I'm really not. So you look at this. 5.65%, are you kidding me? Then I went and looked at, this is just crazy. Where it is, my other thing. Got all the stuff up here, I'm sorry. Then I looked at, let's go moderate growth. Let's say this lady had a hundred grand. Hundred grand, and the lady, I'm trying to remember, Is that this one? No. This is what I want to run this off. Go one step in front of Look. These are regional leaders that I have in our organization. These are the next regional vice presidents. Look, I'm pretty well known. If I, if I promote you to RVP, you're at least earning a hundred grand minimum wage. And then I blast you every day that you only make a hundred grand worth of profit. I joke. But anyways, this is JC Batista. Okay? 12 months, he did right at 100 recruits, 100 grand premium. When you average it out, he's a regional leader averaging eight recruits by roughly 8,800 premium under 80 grand. He's not writing a million dollars a month. 80 grand. If you're out on appointments and you're licensed and you're comp, you're gonna write 80 grand on accident. Even in Utah. <laughs> <laughs> Utah okay. If, are there any regional leaders in the room that average eight recruits and eight grand in the premium? No. You do? Alright, great job. What's your name? Amy. Now do you have a watch yet? Okay. Now probably you don't have a watch because you probably do the 88, but you ain't doing the 80 grand month, right? That's why you're here in row two. I love it. Good job. Congratulations, right? So you are you are on the clock. Good job. Here's his income, okay? Because there's this myth that you have to be an RVP to make the watch, which is ridiculous, right? How much was in investments? 20 grand of it. So here's the thing you gotta get. If that guy wasn't making the extra 20 grand in investments, his wife would have made him go get a job already. He's got to make 50 to stay here. So he got trained, he got competence, he go 8 8, 9 9, watch wear, right? So there's one guy. And you look at this guy, Rich and Lillian. Rich and Lillian. Look at their yearly recruits 
114 recruits, 114 grand. He's recruiting two directs a month, and he's out there training them right personal premium every month. And look, he's averaging nine and a half, and nine and a half, and his volume is only 85 grand a month. That's a couple rollovers. That's a couple investments, and he's out in the right markets working the business, and look at his income. He took a watch and he made 21 grand in his security. His wife wouldn't let him not have a job on the watch. He is going to get 20 degrees in the last day. Okay? Um, I just use this guy because I'm running out of time. Great vote. Great vote. 126 recruits, 100 and a half in premium, a million four in volume, regional leader. He averaged 11 by 12.6 and 118 grand. Want to know why he averaged a little more volume? He recruited a little bit more. He went out on more training points. Okay, look at his cash flow, 62,000, and that was the month he got promoted to RVP. So then you look at this, that was November. He got promoted, December, January, February, March, April. Here he is just a couple months later, right? This is in April. April, okay? Look at his income, 104. Like, so you go from RL to Ringware and RVP in 150 days, okay? And look, his income is pretty much a little less than half, a little more than half, but pretty much right in the middle. As a small RVP, you want to strive to make at least what you make in life in investment. Now obviously the larger you get when you're like NSD, S NSD, you get all these extra bonuses, the SDP bonus and the NSD bonus, and so you're not half and half, okay? But if you're a little RVP, if you're out in the right market and you're recruiting enough people and you're getting enough inventory to go out, you should be making whatever you make in life, you should earn around that in other pre-pay legal investment if you're doing the right job. If you're not, you're probably not doing the right job. Okay? So you will look at that. He's a new army team. After replacement, he's doing 10 recruits and 11 grand, and he's averaging now 280 a month. That's after replacement. His replacement is awesome too. I have him in my big shop. This is a guy that his wife got ill. And he was not able to leave her alone. For the last two years, he had to be with her every day. Um, it was this illness where his wife could black out at any time and just drop on the floor, hit her head, and really hurt herself. So for two years, he was not able to leave the house. Right? Isn't is that crazy how life could just change like that, right? And you look at this, and I won't give you his name, but look at his income. 150 grand in the last 12 months, not leaving his house. When I tell you not leaving his house, he's not leaving his house, not leaving his wife's side. Okay? And look, his case average. 13 by 12, look at his volume. Why? Just because he trains his people. He trains his people. 150,000, not leaving your house. Who would like to do that? Not leaving your house. Yeah. I wouldn't I jump off a bridge if I made 50, but I know what you mean. <laughs> Art Nunez, another, these are all people direct to me, whether regional vice presidents or regional leaders, okay? Look at his recruits, 268, 194, 20 directs. He's our rank premium. His income is 189, 100 grand of it in investments. And he's right in premium. So it left. Now, I know all you analyticals are analyzing that and seeing what's wrong with that. But if you had 10 guys like that, you'd be making a million and a half. So analyze what you want. This guy here, <laughs> William, look at his recruiting, 323. Look at his premium, his day shop. Look at his income, 272. And look, life, just a little bit more than half. Investments a little bit less than half. He's an RVP averaging 27 by 27, 
Look at his volume and his income is 272 grand a year. If you did no investments and you average 27 by 27, you might be making 100 and a half. That's a 120 grand cost to you to not do it. Not even to mention the clients you're not helping. Not, not even to mention the residual income that you're missing out on. I'm almost done here, okay? Here's one of my RVPs I scratched off his name. I don't want you to look at it, but look, his income is 277. Look at his investment income, 34 grand. Look at the percent. So look, even if you're in my heart and I trade the crap out of you, if you're a blockhead and you don't want to listen, you're just going to lose out on a lot of money. Okay? His all is all, I'm in the lack market. Our whole organization is Latin. Everybody we got is either Cuban, Colombian, Venezuela, everybody's Latin. So you're like, I'm in the market. Well, the rest of us are too, and we're writing shitloads of money. <laughs> it's education. Here's mine. Here's what I averaged last year in recruits, in the base shop. Okay, premium in the base shop. Look what I made, 882. Okay, plus last year I got a hundred grand worth of primary stock. So you add that to the 882, I'm at 982, but let's just say 882. And I'm an NSB. That's what I average and recruit. And listen, that's me not even being there. Why? Because I'm wide. I'm wide. I got 10 producing wide legs. I'm not there. Like they're running training tonight. I have freedom. Now you say, I got freedom, but if your base drops to nothing and you are not working and you don't have no freedom, you have that base shop cranking out on your keys. So you look at that 44 by 46, look at our volume, 613,000. Why? Investment licenses and training. We do recruits, we do premium, we got 188 license codes in our base shop, hired me last year 245. 242, look at the volume. Three million a month. That's average a month. And all of it in overrides. Overrides. Isn't that why we all join a business? Overrides. When you all join, did you ever say, all right, I like this override thing, but I only want to override one product. Because <laughs> I don't want to make too much money. <laughs> and I don't want my guys making too much money because they may not recruit if they make too much money. Like the more money you make, the more you should want to recruit people. The more you your life changes and you get out of debt and you overcome your obstacles and your fears and you grow a business, the more you're a crusader about recruiting people to this business. So I don't want to hear this weekend because I'll karate chop your ass <laughs> that you can't grow an investment business along with a recruiting premium co-number business. And I think I'm out of time. I'm done. Thank you very much.